Well, Chris, you've been in football long enough to, to see plenty of these situations. I would imagine a, a tricky week. Yeah, no doubt a tricky week. It's a quite Percy. It's quite emotional, isn't it? It's it's something that happens in the game. You got a lot of good friends. You work very hard to try and achieve something, and maybe you don't get there, and they end up losing the jobs. It is an emotional time, but at the end of the day, we're professional people, and I think it's very important. And people who've left the club will understand that if you're at the club, you still have to do your job to the best ability. So, you know, Noise is a mate of mine, and, and Dave and, and Yuli, but. Um, you know, I've been asked to continue and be interim manager and I think we've got to do that, one, for the players um, because we've got this group together, they're a great group, great group of guys and then um, we've got a game coming up on Saturday. So it was very, very important for me and speaking to the other staff, it's very, very important that they go and you know, pr produce a good display. They've got two games left before the international break and, and football goes on. As you said, I've been in it 34 years professionally now. So I've seen a lot of things and a lot of things have happened. So you just have to, you know, sometimes you roll with the punches, they say. But it's what you have to do, isn't it? In terms of, of finding out, was it was it Sunday for you like everybody else? Yes, it was Sunday, yes. And then and then you, you, um, you're you a bit surprised, you're a bit shocked. You know, anything can happen in football as well, as we know. So it's not, um, and it's 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 disappointing to hear, isn't it? Because it's, it's something that you've been doing for the last two and a half years. But as I said, you've kind of got to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably different sometimes because I'm quite, um, you know, I knock the TV on, I see there's wars around the world and I see there's people, you know, struggling and, and stuff like that. And I think that maybe some people have lost a job or you're in a chance of losing your job. But at the end of the day, you know, life continues and you've just got to, you know, you've just got to keep going and keep, yeah, I love the game, I'll always be in the game. And I think, that, you know, the people who've left the club love the game as well and we'll be back in the game. So I think that's what we have to do. We have to dust ourselves down. It was a shock on Sunday, Monday. You're kind of a bit all over the place. And then you just start getting your head on and prepare for, for coming in, knowing that you've got to deal with 30, 40 different, you know, different people who have got different things happening to them and, and their, all their thoughts are going to be different. But at the end of the day, it comes back down to a game. We need to win the game against Sheffield Wednesday. So that was the remit when I came in, I said, when I had the meeting with the staff and the players, come and see us. Some of the lads have never been through this situation. So you've got to see, you know, Tommy and Belly are looking around, you know, probably thinking, what's going on? Or, what's happening here? Or stuff, you know, and I just give them their, you know, their debuts and they, they feel a real part of it. Are they a bit, a bit unsure of what's going to happen in the future? But we just have to say to them, you're footballers, and if you're doing your talking out there, it doesn't matter who comes in. <laughs> Once you're doing well, they'll play you. And, and for you, you know, again, you've been in the game for a long enough mm. time, but it, it is a different role being the main man for, for however long it is. Is that something that, that sits comfortably with you? Is it something that you'd look to do at, at some point in your, your your future career? Yeah, I think a few people have said that to me before. Would I be interested in it and doing it and stuff? And the situations, you know, little offers have come here and there. I went to India and I managed out there and we set the club up. So it's not something that really um, panics me. I, I quite enjoy it at times. There's other bits you don't. It's just how you get to those positions. It's the hurtful bit and the bit that you have to get over and they're the emotional bits. So, you know, I just hit the ground running. We've got, you know, we've got staff here working hard. The lads, like every, every coach or anybody that coaches any session, if the lads are, are applying themselves and working hard and, and um, buying into what you're trying to do and what we're all trying to do and trying to, you know, think about the game on Saturday, We'll do that. And as I said to you, I've said this in every interview, so you know I'm not lying. We've got a great bunch of lads down there. We've got a real good dressing room. So it's probably a little bit easier that way. One of the big problems over the, the last few weeks has obviously been mm. the, the, the treatment room. has been far more uh, busy mm. than you would like it. Yes. First things first, anybody possibly back for this weekend? Yeah, you've probably seen Zach has been training and you've seen that, that George has been out training, Carl's been training. So um, again, they're literally... You've got to assess them after nearly every session because you don't want to push them. You can get a bit carried away and they're looking great and you think, whoa, here we go. And then they come in the next morning and they're a bit stiff. <laughs> and you're like, oh, what do we do there? So it's one of them where you have to judge it. And probably when you're the man that's got to make that final decision, you're probably a little bit more careful. But um, it's great to have them back out and they will be, they, they will be in contention uh, for us. And that's a huge lift, isn't it? Rob Atkinson trained today. He's a little bit... 
You know, he's a little bit behind on that. He needs a couple of games. Eamon Benaroos trained today, which is great. So, you know, if I was doing this interview in four weeks, you'd be probably you'd be a lot, lot happier, wouldn't we? We'd all be a lot happier and the squad would look, wouldn't look as uh, juvenile as it has done over the last couple of weeks. But it's um, it's one of those things. But yeah, the, the lads are in contention and uh, and then we'll see when we get into them tomorrow morning to make that final decision. Yeah, because it, obviously it's, it's one of those where, I think it was 12 for, uh, for, for last weekend, I mean, for the size of squad you've got. Mm -hmm. As a, a staff, are you able to sort of look back and think, actually, you know, maybe we should do things differently or is mm -hmm. it just one of those things that was the way it is and that there's nothing you would change? I, th I think we, you, you'd probably take them all in, as individual cases. I wouldn't say it's a block. I think when people say there's an injury crisis or there's, this happens and that happens, there's never a crisis because all the injuries are different. One's a tackle, one's a lad. You know, like Rob Atkinson last season fell over a lad on the touchline and we're all telling him to get up and he did his cruciate. Naki chases a ball down and goes to head it and lands on his ankle, it, it jumps. Do you know what I mean? Jame will get smashed off, off uh, tails a nighty and whoever, one of their players the other day and damages his ankle. Same with George, so a lot of it's been contact. And um, so you're always looking at to, to improve on everything. Please don't, you know, no one will ever tell you that they want to have 12 injuries. And we look and we, we look at everything. But a lot of the stuff that we've been doing, we've been doing for 12, for, sorry, for, for two years. So it's, it's stuff that we've adapted and, you know, international breaks, we give the guys a, a, a long break during it, but they have the heart monitors and they do this stuff. So. If you had a couple of injuries in that, you'd say, oh, OK, no problems. But we've done it five times, six times. And people haven't mentioned if they've been off or they haven't been off. So it's always going. So I think six of our injuries have been contact. You know, at least six. Um, a couple then you would question that you would say, well, maybe we pushed them. And as I said, that's what we're saying. I'm talking about Zach, we're talking about George, we're talking about them. Every day we're talking about them. To do it. So, yeah, you would have a look at a couple of things, but really, I think we've got one of the best. I think Dave Rennie did an unbelievable job. He's got a great job, a great name in the game, hasn't he? You know, so I think it's one of those that you might look at. But it's, you know, sometimes it is what it is in football. We, I keep going back to three o'clock on Saturday, I get quite uh, about it because I think it's, we want their strongest team out there. That's what we want, their strongest team. So we do nothing detrimental <laughs> to try and hurt ourselves. We try 110% to have everybody 100. We want 26 players fully fit, absolutely flying, 2% body fat. Do you know what I mean? All six foot eight and we can all run 20 kilometers every game. But we don't get that, but that's your dream. So you know, you know, we'll just keep plugging along with that. So talking three o'clock yes. on a Saturday afternoon, it's mm. Sheffield Wednesday this weekend. And obviously not had the, the greatest of seasons, but mm. given you're not going to be at full strength. Whatever mm. happens, whoever is available, mm. it's still not a game that you can take lightly. No chance, no chance. I need a good win the other day against Rodham. Looked very strong. Got a good, a lot of experienced players as well. So they'll know when they come in here. They'll know what the, the injuries. They'll know what the manager. They'll know what different things. And you know, their coach will probably say that, and a lot of people will be saying that. But we have a lot, a lot of belief in what we have and the team that we put out. I thought young JJ played well last week in a difficult situation in, in, against Cardiff, you know, to make your debut and it probably a depleted team and come out. And we were competitive in the game. Maybe we weren't as good as we wanted to be and did as well as we did, but we're competitive and we're always competitive. And we'll be competitive on Saturday, there's no doubt about that. Having experienced players, a couple more experienced players in the team definitely helps. So I think that we go into it, we know it's going to be very, very tough. They're coming off a win, they've got a new manager. They're trying to, to, to um, he's probably trying to get a belief into them of the way he wants to play and what he wants to do. And I think after a win, that grows. So they'll be coming into the game and, you know, quite confident, I would say. But they will get to have a difficult game on Saturday. I've got no doubt about that. Thank you very much. You talk about Tommy mm. and Sam as examples at the start of the week, kind mm. of how younger players, mm. how they may react. Mm. How are they now? Like, have you seen a change over the week? from yes. the news on Sunday? I think they all have. I think at the end of the day, that's what happens. I think on Sunday for everybody is probably utter shock and 
and what's going to happen and panic stations. Then it calms down the next day after they've spoken to their mum and dad or, or their, their best mate or they've spoken to someone who calms them down a little bit and they go, okay, and you know, you have that emotion. I was quite emotional on, on Sunday hearing that. Um, and I'm not, my, my wife will be looking at this saying, really? Are you? <laughs> you know, but, um, but I just, that's, that's, the way, that's the way it is. And some of the senior lads have a lot of history with Nigel. So they would have been emotional and they would be feeling it in different ways. You've got lads whose contracts maybe up. You've got staff members. There's so many things that go into people's minds. It's not just the manager leaving. There's so many other things going. So that's what I said to you about having 30, 40 different individuals. We're all human. We've all got different feelings and different perspectives in life. So it's, it's been great. For me, I said to them, and I think it probably runs true, is the application. We've got to have an application to go and train and play. That's what you get paid for. That's why we're professionals. That's why we're professional footballers. That's why we're professional coaches. So the best way to get over anything, and do anything, is do what you love and do what you do. So that's, we've made it quite, quite bright, quite up and at it, you know, a lot of talking and a lot of, you know, just asking people, are you okay? And as I said, we're, we're getting ready for the game. Got two games before the international break. That's a possible six points to have. The league table looks totally different if you win those two games. So that's what you get on. Because whatever happens, the Bristol City is here. The Bristol City players, that's what you get paid to do. That's what we get paid to do. So I think that, yeah, we can feel it. And if anyone, you know, we say to them, if, if anyone's struggling to play in the game, be honest and come and see us. But I haven't seen that at all, you know. And um, I, think they've got, I think they've got a lot of respect for what we've done and what we've tried to do within the group. So we've got quite a tight group. Appreciate it's sometimes hard to kind of talk about yourself in this way, maybe. But yeah. would it be fair to say kind of your character and personality lends itself mm. quite well to this situation? Kind of how you are um, as a person around the place. I don't know if you if you. I try not to get too high, as I said to you, and I try not to get too low. I think I'm very lucky to be doing what I'm doing, um, but I think they have to appreciate as well. They they have to be, you know, they have to appreciate and that they're lucky that they're players and they're getting mm. a chance to play and different things like this happen. So yes, I am quite upbeat. I speak to everybody in the club. I don't think why should it be clicks or why should you not, you know. I say hello to people in the morning and that's why I am and I, what I can't change I can, I can be sulky now and again if something happens but um, I think it probably does help with the way I am I'm, I'm a glass half full No, I used to say to me I'm a bit you know too positive sometimes yeah. a little bit but um, that's the way I am um, and does it suit, suit I don't know how you're going to how you'll judge or how I judge it I've just tried to be me as much as I can and uh, keep, keep things going. I'm just kind of asking this because I imagine mm. the supporters will want to hear it. I appreciate it. it might be a difficult mm. one to answer, but have you spoken to Nigel and how is he? Yeah, no, he's disappointed. He's, he's definitely disappointed. He's a friend of mine and, and we speak, I've spoken to them all. I, um, you just don't suddenly cut ties. No, of you course. Know, and yeah. I, you know, and I, I'm being a little bit flippant as well with that. I'm just saying that, you, yes, I've spoken to him and... You know, he, he's hurting, he's, he's, he's worked here, he's really enjoyed it. You've spoken to him, haven't you? So, you know, I'm not saying anything that we all don't know. He enjoyed it here and he worked hard and he, he you know, he, he got his players out, he got it in, he wanted to create an environment. So I think if you're at a club, you'd love to look back and think that you've made a difference or that you'll be remembered or you've done something. So I think that, you know, in the, in the coming days that he'll appreciate that. Um, but, they're, you know, they're all disappointed. It's, it's a really good club, <laughs> isn't it? And it's a great city. Hmm. So I think, yeah, who wouldn't be disappointed leaving? But at the end of the day, that's the game. Um, but, you know, they, we move on. Looking ahead to Saturday then, because mm. that's probably what you want to talk about the most. Yes. I would think. Yes. How much of kind of you are you putting on this team? Or, mm. or how much can you put on this team of you? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. I think that everybody comes in, you know, what was the archetypal one? They're not fit enough. You know, the new coach used to come in, you go, they're not fit enough. Or we need eight players, we do that. I'm an interim uh, boss. I don't know what my time limit is or what it is. All I can think about is Sheffield Wednesday. So I had four days. So you're not literally going to start, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to paint the Mona Lisa, you know what I mean? In, in, in four days, you know what I mean? That's what it is. It is. 
and all you can do is you can reinforce the stuff you can have a chat with some of the guys about different things that you think might happen or might help them which you would do and there's little bits that you want to tweak there's little bits that you probably all want to tweak there's things that we haven't done well enough over the last four weeks and I've been involved in that so I can't say do you know what I mean so yeah. I can't come in and go oh and all that I'm part of it you know that, that's what it is And but we've never gone out to want to lose a game my biggest thing is this team will never let you down physically will they they'll never let you down physically they'll work the socks off they'll do that we've got to do that but I think as Noy just probably said over the last few games we haven't been clinical enough I don't think we probably created enough chances for the possession that we've had. So it's something that we've talked about. Um, so that's something that we've, we've talked about for the last three, four days. And it's all about improving. It's all about improving. And if they're better after my four days <laughs> or five days, we'll be buzzing. But as I said to you, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for the game. And that's what I said to the club. Is I've got no doubts that I'll have them ready, that we'll have them ready for the game. Just on the injuries, just to yes. just to clarify, so Zach, Cow, and George, yeah, and, are, yeah, and Eamon, yeah, 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 Eamon's yeah. floating, yeah, yeah, around, yeah, it'd yeah, be a lot yeah. for him yes, to have to yeah, come yeah, in, yeah, those three, but those three could be, could be. Could so be, is that when you're assessing them tomorrow? Are you picking the team before training? Like, are you doing anything different in that regard? No, no, we've done bits. I'm not gonna. Tell you no, really. I know you're not. I know you're not. And I'm not trying that, to get you. No, no, yeah, you are really. You are, <laughs> you are really. You know, I love that one, do you? I don't want to ask that one again, or I ask the same question yeah. six times yeah. in different ways. Yeah. Did you know what I mean? He's looking well, isn't he? Or whatever. But um, no, I think, um, you no, know, we've talked about the team and we've had a chat with the lads about the team if everybody is fit. Okay. And ready to go. So we will finalise that tomorrow, but we know where we are and what we're doing, and the lads know what they're doing. As team wise, good stuff. I'll leave it okay. Cheers, Curtis. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Curtis. No um, you have spoken about it already, but what actually was your first reaction when you heard the news on Sunday? And you spoke to Nigel. I'm intrigued to know what's he made of the supporter response to the decision. Yeah, I haven't spoken to him too much about that, if I'm honest with you, um, because we've spoken about heart things and feelings more than than the out. Were kind of outpouring. He 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 had a few messages. People saying, you know, that the fans were not, weren't, you know, weren't probably happy with it. I don't know, or you know, but he didn't really. We didn't really speak about that. It was more about us and the time we've had and the time we're gonna have again and what we're going to do. I found on on Sunday it rocked me a bit. I was like, oh wow, nightmare. It never, I think I've, I've always said, you know, I, I played for Middlesbrough for 10 years and I got a testimonial and it was brilliant. And I thought when I got into coaching, I thought you'll never get a
we've helped them, we've talked to them. And as I said to you, the best thing for them is to get to where they want, where they want to get is out there. That's the be all and end all for them if they want to be professional footballers. So we've been talking to them. Any questions, literally be quite open. My door's open. Come in. I want to have a chat. How are you feeling? What's going on? I had a chat with Tommy this morning, you know? Everything okay? How are you doing? And that, you know? So to find the lads and, um, and, and they get to understand. And we have got a good group of senior pros that have helped as well. I think Andy was saying it was about 13 managers he's seen. <laughs> so I don't know whether he's a bad omen <laughs> or, uh, or what it is. I might be 13 or 15. He said, I said, really? I said, wow. I think, you know, get him out quick, whoever you are. Um, but it's one of those things. So it's, um, it, it, you know, I can talk all day about it, but that kind of, that's the general gist of what we've been doing. You say that, you know, football does move on. Things do move on. Mm. In terms of your brief, is it literally Saturday? Yes. Or into and a recruitment process? You, you're not involved in that in any way? And you don't no, no, it's it. definitely Saturday. And I was asked to take the game, take the game, next game. If it needs to be, I'll, I'll be here. And that's, I'm in the job. You know, as I said to you, that's how I think. And I was asked to do it and, and I'm, I'm happy to do it. I've got no worries to do it. So we'll see. And, as you, you know, we have always been, I was interim at, at Crystal Palace um, years ago. For, and uh, I think it was Ian Holloway came on on the Friday. Do you know what I mean? And I took the game on Saturday and then we went. So it's, it's one of those things. Anything can happen at the time. Um, but I, I'm prepared for that. So nothing's going to be a shock. Do you know what I mean? And um, so maybe staying a bit longer, may not, but my real, real thoughts of Saturday. And then let's see what happens after that. And just finally then, yeah. in regards to Saturday, what's your message to supporters? Because obviously they've had quite a testing week as well with the news, haven't they? Yeah, there's no doubt they have. And, and there's probably shock with them. Some, you know, it's, it's all, it's different people, isn't it? There's 30, 40,000, 50,000 people who have opinions of, of, of everything and what's going on. But at the end of the day, the lads who are going to run out on Saturday, like they've done, than they have been doing. I think they've really appreciated the effort that the lads have put in. And I think they'll see that again on Saturday. But that effort is sometimes driven by them. And we've got some real good lads that need that sometimes. And I think it's very, very important that they get behind those lads that were run out in red, in red on Saturday. It's hugely important. Opinions are opinions. Everyone's got their opinion about football and situations that have occurred. But the lads who run out on Saturday, come on, let's, you know, let's get behind them, um, whatever way we're feeling.